Yeah, I mean, some of that stuff is just like, again, me overthinking. Like all the kitchen stuff, you can just buy it here. So buy it when it's necessary. Buy it when you need it. Um, yeah. Thinking about the poncho and the umbrella, I mean, it's a rainy country, so it made sense to bring those. But I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get the same quality here. But, I mean, I can. So it's like, if you're going to a place where it rains all the time, they probably are able to accommodate it raining all the time. So if you want to bring yeah. the stuff, you can. But also, like, they have ponchos, and a million ponchos and a million umbrellas here. Just like if you're going to a place that's really cold, they're going to have a million accommodations for being cold. So just keep that in mind and try to be realistic. Um, you know, we're getting into like all of the, I brought a full freaking CVS with me here. Yeah, you and did. What the, like, hell is here? what the hell is even this? <laughs> On one hand, like, it was way too much, and I could have got it all here. But on the other hand, I have almost not had to go to a pharmacy at all, and I have tapped into so much of this stuff. So yeah. it's like, you know, Especially some of it... because I've been bumming off of you. Yeah. So, like, those throat lozenges, maybe not. Two, so those two red things of deodorant, I found out recently they burn my armpits. So, you know, make Damn. sure make sure you're not buying stuff that you're not sure if you can use or not because I used the two white ones, but then when I got to where I wanted to use the red ones, I can't use them because my skin's sensitive. Um, okay, so let's get to the ultimate ridiculous just oh, I'm mad about it. So, we were told that we had to cover our tattoos up. Fun fact, that's not true. Um, now for you, Alex, I don't know. For, I, e for EDU volunteers, do you all actually have to cover up visible tattoos, or does nobody have any? So not the condoms. Not the condoms. <laughs> what were you planning on doing? <laughs> they gave um, us condoms. Come on. That's true. Did did I? This is a side story. Did I tell you about when I um? What was it? Oh. I requested, um, what is that? What, uh, never mind. I'll tell you later. When it comes to, what was I going to say? I got Tattoos, so distracted by condoms. Tattoos. So, I So just to jump in while you're saying makeup. that, we're, what I'm showing now is all the crap I brought to cover up my tattoo. So go ahead. You, you may be about to talk about your makeup too. <laughs> yeah, I brought some because I have one very very small on my wrist and one on my shoulder which is not as I, that's typically not exposed but um i brought some similar stuff i have a concealer i have a foundation and then i think i have some like setting spray or something so that it doesn't wipe off um and i did use it a little bit when we first got here and then I was like, I wonder what happens if I just don't, like if I stop caring <laughs> and nobody comments on it. I mean, occasionally people will be like, oh, my gosh, you have a tattoo. Whoa. But I mean, I work in a school and even though it's very like the dress is supposed to be very conservative, um, I've never had an issue with my visible tattoo. Now, if you have like a whole sleeve on your arm or you have like a ton of tattoos or if your tattoos depict like nudity or gore or something, I don't know, like you tattoo whatever you want on your body. That's not my business. But um, then it may raise eyebrows, but I know like Gabe Klein went out and bought a sleeve for his yeah. arm and he wore it because during CBT, his... Um, his counterpart at our practice school kind of was a little bit weird about it. She like, she once asked him like, what are you wearing the sleeve for? And he was like, oh, I have a tattoo. And she kind of gave him a dirty look. And so he just kept wearing the sleeve because he was like, I don't really want to cause issues with her. Mm. Um, but so I think it definitely depends on the person because we are in a culture that is a little bit more conservative 
maybe plan to cover up, but maybe don't spend fifty dollars on makeup. Maybe just buy a tattoo sleeve. Yeah. Like a skin tone colored thing to cover up. But I mean, I still have the makeup. I've barely used it. I don't use it on a daily basis. I don't ever cover it up. I've actually seen a ton of Filipinos who have tattoos themselves, visible tattoos themselves, on their arms, their necks, their you know, men with tattoos that like at the beach, not wearing a swim shirt, covered in tattoos on the chest, like. Yeah. So, I think. Yeah. I mean, what's her name was really, really strict about that. It was like, oh my god, no visible tattoos, no visible face hair. Or we're, like, we're we're gonna take you out back of the hotel in LA and we're gonna shoot you. We're gonna old if you show you. up with visible <laughs> tattoo. But uh, I think mean, we got here and they're not a problem. I mean, Tony walking around with like half a sleeve on his right arm, fully exposed. So. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, let's pause for a sec. Okay. I think when it comes to... Go back to 2827 as you're talking. Okay. When it comes to makeup generally, if you want to bring makeup, that's fine. People, like, if you if you work in an office where you are going to be, especially if you are female presenting you might be expected to dress up a little bit more and wear makeup, but not necessarily. It just kind of depends on the culture that you are, that your Peace Corps post is, and then also the culture of your workplace. Yeah. Uh, um, whether or not that's necessary, it's not in mine or for me. You, I could if I wanted to. I could cover this tattoo up if I really cared. I don't have to. I know some of the volunteers wear makeup to their workplaces, but I also know a lot of female volunteers that don't wear makeup. So, um, because it's just, they don't want to, they choose not to, and it's not necessary at their workplace. People don't give them shit for it as far as I'm aware. So, and also a lot of these things, like they're small, but if you have a lot of them, they take up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. So unless you're, really unless you're really attached to it or unless makeup is something that you really like or you want to wear like then maybe bring you know bring your stuff but um when you when you bring that kind of stuff there's no guarantee that you can replace it exactly here yeah yeah with a lot of the same stuff especially because a lot of the products here are whitening or brightening because they have skin whitening in them Mm -hmm. so uh and like not necessarily for makeup but um it may be hard depending on your skin tone it may be hard to match the makeup in your country of post yes to your skin tone so maybe consider not bringing makeup or just figuring it out when you get in country yep uh especially because makeup is so expensive like, if yeah. you can avoid, I went out and bought makeup brand new to come here, and I kind of wish that I hadn't, because it was like 50 bucks for what I bought. Mm -hmm. So, you know, save yourself the 50 bucks and just don't bring it. If you already have a ton of makeup products and you are already planning on bringing it and wearing it anyway, then, you know, might as well. But it's... A lot of small things that add up to a lot of space in your luggage that you could spend on other stuff or remove entirely yes so and i'll make a couple of comments on that because it's like so i'm male presenting i don't wear makeup on my face but if you're going to like consider the fact that you're probably going to get sweaty and you really don't have any idea until you get to site exactly how sweaty you're going to be. Like, are you just going to be sweaty on your commute, but then you get there and there's air con, so you can kind of dry off? Or do you end up having no air con at your site, so you're just sweaty all day, and now you're sweating in makeup? Um, you know, that you, you just, you don't know. But you're probably, like in our case, in a tropical country, you're going to be damp and you're going to be hot unless you happen to have makeup, I mean, uh, air con. And then even when yeah. there's air con, if you go out even to lunch and come back, you're going to get sweaty again. 
Um, yeah. So I mean, yeah. I mean, if you're if you have like or you can find in country really nice waterproof makeup or like sweatproof makeup, like go for it. Yeah. But you're probably gonna have to like touch it up a lot because like my school the classroom none of the classrooms because it's a small school none of the classrooms have aircon thankfully we live or i mean the school is right next to a farm and my classroom specifically with the windows open gets a really nice breeze Mm. coming into the classroom um but not all of the classrooms get that so it's like really hot really sweaty and if i was wearing any kind of makeup i would probably just sweat it off throughout the day like very quickly because I step out of my house. As soon as I turn off the electric fan in my room, two minutes go by and I'm already like literally look like I took a swim. So, <laughs> um, like, yeah, just a consideration. If you're in a hot country or country that is even mildly warm or country that has a, t- uh, a kind of warm climate that you, your body is not used to. Like if mm-hmm. you're from the Northeast, example and you're coming to a tropical country the heat is going to bother you a lot and if you're wearing makeup that's probably also going to bother you a lot because you're going to sweat it off a lot yep and to my dude unless you have go ahead i was just going to say unless you have the most amazing setting spray on the planet where (laughs) or like the best waterproof makeup on the planet where it doesn't smear or you know drip or wipe off at all when you sweat or get wet or of any kind then good for you i don't know how your bank account feels about that but um yeah and to to jump off of that too it's like to kind of put a put a cap on that like even if you have that you have access to that there's two things i would say number one are you really going to want to do that every day because like you're gonna be you're gonna be tired here you're gonna have limited time and you're gonna be yeah you're you're gonna be exhausted and you're gonna be going through a lot mentally and emotionally and physically especially during the first several months of transition i mean putting makeup on may be like it may be something that makes you feel normal or makes you feel comfortable but I would say for a lot of people, it's going to become a hassle to do it every day. And eventually you're just, you're not going to care that much because nobody else is going to care. So definitely consider maybe how realistic it is to put makeup on every day and to try to keep up with that. Because you have to remember that you're going to be here for two years. Um, And I'll definitely say like to my dudes that, have a tattoo and are thinking about doing what I did and getting all this makeup to cover your tattoo up. Dude, bro, if you don't know how to do makeup and cover up a tattoo, you're not going to use any of this stuff. Okay. Just buy a tattoo sleeve. Like Alex said, the sleeve is going to be fine because it's easy. You can, if you, if you actually have to use it, then you can just put it on and let people ask you why you have it on the makeup you're not going to give yourself enough time to do it. You're not going to do it right. It's going to look like crap and it's going to come off and it's just not going to work. And you're going to have spent a hundred dollars on all these products for no reason. And the last point that I'll make on that is with all of these consumables, whether it's facial makeup, tattoo covering makeup, deodorant, you have to consider the fact that unless you're just committed to bringing two years worth of it, it's going to run out eventually. And then what are you going to do when it runs out? You're going to have to switch. Most likely you're going to have to switch to something in country. So what is actually worth to you having those couple months of transition before you just switch to something in country? Cause it's like, I feel like, when you come here, you're kind of mentally hanging on to a lot of stuff. Like something kind of dumb is I brought my favorite deodorant. But like at the time, I wasn't thinking about the fact that in in less than two months, those two things of deodorant are gone and I have yeah. to switch over to local deodorant. 
it really was not looking back there was really no reason to do that i could have brought the stick that i was using and then in the first couple of weeks just got local deodorant and started using it you know there's a yeah. lot of there's a lot of consumables that i brought that looking <laughs> back i think i would have not brought them and just started understanding what was available locally sooner than i did so yeah yeah you all all right are you on 28 27 yes all right we're gonna play in three two one play so yeah i mean this is like a hundred dollars worth of really nice products because i was trying to accommodate for the fact that i was going to be sweaty and hot and probably not going to do a good job but even still like it was unnecessary they told us not to bring contacts but i brought contacts and i love them for working out so there's really no reason to not bring contacts I think yeah. they said not to bring them because if you have glasses, it's easier to just wear the glasses, and it's hard to to refill a prescription on contacts. So, actually, I think did you did you tell them you were bringing contacts? Um, I think that they know. Yeah, I think I'm pretty pretty sure I told them I was bringing them. Yeah, because they had. Wasn't there like a form you had to fill out for that during the I, medical clearance? Yep. yep. Yeah, I didn't want to deal with all that. And also, I mean, I guess if you use them when you're working out, then that's That's when I you, use them, yeah. yeah. I would not, I could not be fucked to put those in and take those out every day. <laughs> so <laughs> They're worth it to I'm me too, like, because I just cannot stand to sweat in my glasses yeah. especially if i'm jogging yeah yeah that makes sense so a lot of the stuff that i just showed friction defense conditioner like all that this this right here styling cream this stuff's great but i ran out of it in three weeks to a month and then i couldn't get it again so you know it's like it's fine to bring for the transition but you have to be thinking ahead about what you're going to do when it runs out. And also, you could just go ahead and think about, while you're packing, what of this is actually worth bringing, like a full brand new bottle of, versus what should I just bring a travel size of, use that for the yeah. first week to week and a half, and then just buy something local. 